Hey people, Mark here for another compilation of ship breakdowns, today covering the little guys, the ones oft forgotten about in discussions of Halo lore, the Corvettes. Now before I begin, I think there's still some confusion on what ships I'm going to be covering. All of them. If a ship is in the Halo canon, assume it is already on the list, I will get to it. UNSC Covenant banished civilian forerunner fret not children, it will be done. Now unlike frigates of the UNSC and destroyers of the UNSC, the latter of which I've still got to get around to remaking, I've never covered any of these before. There's just enough info on all of them to make, like, a short video on each one, but I figured instead of making, like, four, three, or four minute videos, why not just make one long one? Is that a good idea? I don't know. Anywho, UNSC Corvettes are the smallest warships that are larger than a fighter, often being used for either fleet support or as guard duty on the back line. Sometimes they also fill the role of space police car. They were also immensely popular among human pirates and rebel groups, most likely because they could be manned by smaller crews and are easier to pilot than the giant hulking masses that are destroyers and carriers and cruisers and stuff. Not to mention that the pirates have to get them somehow. There would probably be more Corvettes just because they're cheaper to make and easier to steal because there are so many and they're so small, it'd be really difficult for a, for an any group to steal like a Halcyon class cruiser. I'm sure they might have managed it somehow at some point, but it'd be really hard. There are a couple ship types that aren't quite corvettes. The UNSC and CMA had a variety of patrol ships, shuttles, and cutters that were equipped to deal with illegal naval activity like smuggling and such. One such example is the Minotaur-class patrol vessel and the UNSC Ariadne that was lost with all hands. Not much is known about these things at all, uh, we just have this one image. But the first genuine UNSC corvette is the Sharpfin-class escort corvette. These have only made one appearance so far, but it was a Troy Denning book so there's a pretty good chance it'll at least be mentioned again. The event in which it appeared was already brought up multiple times in Halo Outcasts. Not much is known about them, and we never get to see them in the flesh since, you know, book, but what we do know is that by 2526 they're pretty outdated, rarely being used for anything outside of escort services for protecting civilian ships like those of the UNSC commercial fleet. They're slow, underarmed, but popular amongst pirates and probably insurrectionists too for the reasons I stated earlier. You can't undersell how much of a benefit it is for a ship to have have a slipspace drive after all. But the only ship of this class we ever see is unnamed, and it's given as a gift to a bunch of castaway kids on the planet Netherop. Admiral Stanforth was hesitant to give them the ship, not just because they're a bunch of, like, actual kids, but because their immediate wish was to go live on the jungle planet Gao, known for its heavy insurrectionist leanings. But a certain green mean killing machine convinced the Admiral to give them the ship because Chief is just a big ol' softy with a heart of gold in spite of all the child abuse. Next up is the Mako-class Corvette, with a bit more info to discuss. Same story here, there are no visuals for this thing, but we know it measures in at 162 meters, making it the third smallest slipspace drive equipped warship in the entire UNSC Navy, I'm pretty sure, beaten out only by the Winter and Razor-class Prowlers, but I could be wrong. Weighing 28,000 metric tons, the Mako-class Corvette by Kushan Shipyards was introduced way back in 2388, and would become the most commonly seen Corvette in human space. The only other ships we know of that are that old are probably the Osa and Akita class frigates, and of course the original Phoenix and Euphrates class colony ships that left Earth. These ships have seen everything, from the Domus Diaspora where humanity left the soul system in droves, through the insurrection all the way up to the Human Covenant War, and even took part in that a little bit. Their small size made them a versatile choice and gained them praise, but it's noted that shipyard personnel are not fans of them due to their litany of maintenance issues. The armament is still surprisingly workable. The thing about early UNSC ships is that they were generally smaller and had no max, so something like the Diligence class, a 550 meter long ship with a single autocannon as its primary armament could be considered a cruiser in 2433. But the Mako's armament seems to be a bit before its time, with two Mark 40 caster naval autocannons, two M42 archer missile pods, and two M870 rampart point defense guns for missiles and fighters. Interestingly, the entire armament of the Mako would return on the much more advanced Strident class heavy frigate developed near the end of the Human Covenant War. The Mark 40 casters would be a upgraded to Mark 55 casters, but the Strident still makes use of the now 200-year-old M870 ramparts and M42 Archer missile pods. I mean, there's a few more weapons on the armament, but for that you can go see the Frigate's video. Top, click up in the top right for that. I wonder why this is, and if the Strident is somehow comparable in construction to the Mako. I mean, the Mako is named after a shark and the Strident is really sharp. This is a flawless line of logic. Leading up to the beginning of the Human Covenant War, the UNSC would finally decide to retire this Corvette due to its litany of maintenance issues 
issues, but it would still remain in use among insurrectionist groups like the Eridanus Rebels, which was one of the more well-equipped any groups. The surviving Makos would be pushed to the back line, alongside the Hillsboro and other ships that were ill-equipped to fight the Covenant. The UNSC Pony Express, what a great name, is the only named example of a Mako class. It was on Earth during the final battle for the planet against the Prophet of Truth during Halo 3 and the book Ghosts of Onyx. Lord Hood offered the ship to Blue Team minus Master Chief because they needed to get to the Shield World Onyx, but lucky them, they stumbled upon the much faster and better equipped Bloodied Spirit, which was a Covenant CPV class destroyer. I did a video on those a while back if you're interested, and good thing they took that one instead, because upon arrival to Onyx, the Bloodied Spirit was overwhelmed and crash landed on the surface after being attacked by Sentinels guarding the planet. I think if they had been in a 200 year old, 160 meter long human corvette, rather than a 1664 meter long shielded Covenant heavy destroyer, they probably would have been obliterated, and Master Chief would be the only surviving member of Blue Team, because he was either on Delta Halo or Earth at the moment. Anyway, a cool old ship named after a terrifying animal. Look at this thing. That is a monster. It does not belong on Earth or in real life. Ah, the quintessential UNSC Corvette for many, including myself. When I think of UNSC Corvettes, I think of the Gladius. In fact, when I think of sci-fi Corvettes in general, I think of this ship, but that could just be me. The Gladius-class heavy Corvette is 243 meters long and weighs 36,000 metric tons. Manufactured by Tansec AB, they are the first on the list to explicitly be plated with the UNSC's signature Titanium A armor. Built specifically to be used by the UNSC rather than the Colonial Military Authority, this is one of only two corvettes to house a Mach cannon. Outfitted with an extensive sensor suite, the Gladius uses laser and radar scanners for tracking and detecting targets, and fills the niche of fleet defense. Crewed by only 15 people, the corvette carries no troops, obviously, and is armed with a single 20DA1 C2 Mach, two M50 Archer missile pods and six M870 Rampart point defense guns. These have more point defense than any other Corvette in the entire UNSC as far as we know. By 2490, which is when these guys would have had to have been introduced by, uh, because they have a Mac and only carriers had Macs before then, these ships would be outgunned by the popular larger ships of the era by quite a margin, but when it came to chasing off rogue pirate bands from isolated UNSC assets, they often succeeded. And so they typically laid low when they needed to, using their tiny sensor profile to do so. When engaged in fleet battles, they would, as stated, perform fleet defense maneuvers, using their point defense and missiles to protect larger ships from fighters, plasma torpedoes, and missiles, and join in whenever called upon by their escorts to help out where they could. Now, the length of a coil gun is not the deciding factor in the power of a uh, coil gun like the Max on UNSC ships, but it does directly affect the strength of them somewhat. Generally shorter Max would be constructed with smaller, weaker magnets and less of them, and so we can surmise that the Gladius is less like its own warship on a Halo battlefield and more like a mobile coil gun battery. As Corporal Hot Pockets discussed in my video on the Epoch class heavy carrier, the largest UNSC coil gun batteries, the Mark 15 Breakwaters, are like three Gladiuses, minus the maneuverability. These would be seen most often as a part of battle groups assigned to the inner colonies, and once the Covenant arrived, they were, if you were looking at it from the any perspective, more outgunned than they already would be against the UNSC. We know of one Gladius-class heavy corvette, the UNSC Sagan Blue. The ship engaged two Mutanet pattern Covenant storm cutters in orbit of New Carthage. We don't know the outcome of this, but if I had to guess... Let me just say, I love how this thing looks. It has the perfect size and shape of a Corvette in my mind. Reminds me of the Fractal Sponge version of the Imperial Lancer class frigate. Not to be confused with the UNSC Lancer class, but we'll, we'll get to that. The Skolt class missile Corvette, yet another example of one that I think everybody knows and is probably the first on a lot of people's minds when it comes to UNSC Corvettes. Also manufactured by Tansec AB, the Skolt was 258 meters long and was originally built to fill the role of a frigate. And when it did, it was considered state of the art, replacing the aging Akita and Osa class vessels, which were presumably also frigates. As firepower dramatically increased in the 2490s with the manufacture of new ships and the increased prevalence of spinal mounted Max, these were demoted to Corvette, much like the Diligence that debuted as a cruiser and fell to the station of but a humble destroyer. Skolts were the most common ships used for training UNSC Navy recruits, as well as the backbone of the CMA fleets leading up to and during the height of the insurrection. They're known for being reliable and well-armed, capable of punching above their weight class 
class and are outfitted with yet another comprehensive sensor suite, but despite all this, they rarely saw use during the Human Covenant War due to their low speed and low slip space viability. This would be a huge problem, as a smaller ship you'd be expected to be able to evade when you need to get out of the way of something big, but against the Covenant, even larger UNSC ships spent a lot of their time running away. They just had to. These didn't see much action against the aliens until all the better UNSC ships had been burned away in the early and middle years of the war, once the back line became the last line. The armament consists of a single M50 guardhouse autocannon, two M58 archer missile pods, two M44 Ares missile pods, and four M870 Rampart Point defense guns. The Ares missiles, interestingly enough, are only found on ships that eventually became obsolete. The unnamed light destroyer, the Diligence, the Hillsborough. The M50 guardhouse only appears on the Skolt as far as we know. And that's pretty much all we know about this ship that has been given a beautiful, beautiful look by the immensely talented Jacob Stokes of Sins of the Prophets over at Choke Point Games, responsible for all the artwork I've been showing on screen. So yeah, pretty cool. And last but not least, the Lancer Class Fast Attack Corvette by Kushan Shipyards again. I feel like this one would be a lot of people's favorites if it had like a good 3D look out there somewhere. This is one of the most fighter-esque corvettes in the entire universe at first glance, but it's actually the largest UNSC corvette that we know of. At 341 meters long, the Lancer is explicitly described as the fastest warship available to the UNSC at the time of its introduction. The ship excels at hit-and-run maneuvers, like smaller, faster halberd wolf packs. Before the Covenant arrived, however, Lancer saw little use for a unique reason. It was considered overarmed and underranged for most insurrection era deployments, but was found to be much more useful against the Covenant, probably because the Coveys prefer to get up close and personal even in space. The armament of the Lancer class consists of one 5D7C2 Mac, which it likely used in conjunction with its six LNT450 naval coil guns, which are the true primary armament rather than the Mac. These have only ever been mentioned in relation to the Lancer class, and their smaller magazine capacity means a typical strategy of Lancer squadrons is to dump rods. <laughs> I'm known to dump rod myself. Wait, no. I just dumped a fat rod. Dumping rods refers to the strategy of emptying their magazines early in an engagement before retreating behind friendly lines to replenish their stores, rinse and repeat. The Lancer also has four M390 Streak 2 point defense missile pods. In lieu of any point defense guns, these Streak missiles are guided anti-fighter munitions. No doubt they could take out a missile or two of their own, but that's not really the Lancer's job. I have a feeling the Lancer would be better equipped to evade a plasma torpedo than destroy it, and besides, that's more the Gladius or Skolt's job. Mixed up my words here. Typically, point defense missiles are anti-missile missiles, not anti-fighter missiles. I meant to say that I'm sure they could take out a fighter or two of their own rather than vice versa. You get it. Even with its increased viability, the Lancer never overcame its limited fuel and munition endurance, and so many of the Corvettes were restricted to planetary defense or intercolony defense, a fate that befell many of the Corvettes of the UNSC. <laughs> Many of the Lancers were even stripped of their slipspace drives because they just never left the systems in which they were stationed, the free space being used for more crew comfort quarters or ammunition storage space. I know I said last but not least, but there is one more human Corvette we know of within the Halo universe, and I know this video is Corvettes of the UNSC, but it's rare that we'd ever get a chance to talk about this on another occasion. The planet I previously mentioned, Gao, is unique among human worlds in that they are effectively completely independent from the United Earth government, even having its own naval defense force with uniquely designed ships. Most of this force seems to consist of Gao Ministry of Protection patrol corvettes. Now we know next to nothing about these things save for the fact that they had to have been built after the Human Covenant War due to the inclusion of a single plasma turret in their armament alongside eight missiles of unknown design. This is super unique. There are no UNSC ships with plasma weaponry. None. Even the Anlace class light frigate opted for powerful lasers instead. This would have been made possible by the booming scrap industry that permeated throughout the known galaxy following the end of the Human Covenant War. We see it a lot on the planet Venezia in the various stories in which it appears. You can get all kinds of things on the inner species black market from stealth tech for your civilian freighter to an entire fucking ket pattern battlecruiser at one point. Though it's no wonder that an outer colony, specifically one with a vested interest in keeping the UNSC out, would splurge on some high-tech weaponry to fit onto their ships. Even if it is directly stated that a fleet of these corvettes would stand no chance against a UNSC task force, they would see any impediment to a hostile UEG takeover as a good thing. The only ship of this class we know of is the GMOP Esmeralda, the flagship of the Gao Defense Fleet. A super cool addition to the lore. I'd love to see more non-UNSC human warships in Halo. That would be really cool. There are plenty of corvettes that we know of that are maybe one of these classes, or perhaps a class we don't yet know, that are never explicitly stated to belong to one. There are no known land 
Lancer-class fast attack corvettes, but the UNSC-2 for flinching is described as a fast attack corvette in Halo Contact Harvest, although the Lancer distinction hadn't been introduced to the lore at that point. The UNSC Callisto was a corvette of unknown class that was the focal point of the Callisto incident, which was the key escalating incident of the insurrection. It's a bit of a long story, but the corvette was hijacked by insurrectionists and managed to take out two destroyers before it was taken out by Preston Cole via the bold and daring strat known as feigning surrender. He did a war crime, like the UNSC pig dog he is. Moving on. The UNSC Alpino was a corvette of unknown class that was destroyed by the Defenders of the Sanctum, which was a group of seven or so Sanghealy that had holed up in a precursor fortress with access to powerful planetary defenses. Another long story. The UNSC Callens, or Challens, or however you pronounce this, I don't really care, was a corvette that was a part of the home fleet during the Battle of Earth. The ship served as a distraction while Blue Team captured the Bloody Spirit, which was that Covenant destroyer that I mentioned earlier. And the UNSC Glamorgan was a corvette that investigated the remains of the planet Onyx in the search of Cote 051, who had sacrificed himself via manual nuke detonation to cut off any chance of pursuit of his Spartans, Lucy and Tom. And that's all the corvettes we know of. I know prowlers are technically considered corvettes, with the exception of the point blank class, which is a cruiser, but I think prowlers deserve their own video. Also, there's a hell of a lot of prowlers, and trying to cover them all would make this a very long one indeed, but yeah. Corvettes. They are some of the coolest designs in the entire UNSC. The ones that have designs, that is. Between the Gladius, Skolt, and the Lancer, there are no misses. They all look sick as hell. However, they all seem to get pushed out for one reason or another. The Sharpfin and Mako are very old and generally underpowered. The Skolt is too slow, and the Lancer has low ammo capacity. The only one that seems to have eked out some persisting viability is the Gladius, serving as more of a point defense corvette than the heavy corvette it's described as. But Halo ships stand out among sci fi warships in that they are huge and generally overpowered, so it makes sense that the corvettes, these ships that are pretty reasonable in scope by comparison, really could not keep up, especially once the coveys entered the fray. However, I want to see a return of one of these, or maybe a revamped post-war corvette. I mean, once the humans get back on their feet. Or maybe one that was built sometime between Halo 3 and 5. If I were to write a Halo trilogy, <clears throat> I would have a Corvette be the focal point. It's perfect, and everyone who knows a good character-driven sci-fi story knows what I'm talking about. That elusive, perfect size for a hero ship. The capability for the audience to know the entire crew. What, what's the Rocinante? Uh, a Corvette. I mean, it's a Corvette-class frigate, which is a bit different from how the UNSC does things, but you know what I'm getting at. I'd love to see some cannon, sharp fin, and Mako designs, but if that never happens, I wouldn't really be surprised. An underrated and underrepresented class of Halo ship. But that's all I've got. You'd probably like and have seen my Frigates of the UNSC video by now if you've seen this one, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's right in your face, probably. Probably up screen, on screen right there. Peace.